Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at mutations, the inheritance of mutations, the causes of mutations, and then we'll finish with a summary. So mutations are a major problem for our DNA. In the lifetime of any organism, the cells can spontaneously acquire mutations in their DNA. So remember the DNA is the genetic information of the cell, and it's a series of bases in order to code for all of our proteins. And sometimes through the life of the organism, we can have a mutation. And this can cause a variety of problems. A mutation is defined by a change to the genetic material of a cell. So the genetic material can be the DNA, all of those bases in order from start to finish, and it can also be arranged in chromosomes. So mutations can be a small scale mutation, which we normally call a gene mutation, or it can be a large scale or chromosome mutation. So remember DNA itself is a really long molecule which contains all the information that the cell needs. And a gene is a length of DNA coding for a particular protein. So sometimes that mutation which occurs might be just part of a particular gene or multiple parts of a gene. So we would call that a gene mutation and this is very small scale. Of all the genes in the body and all of the genes in the DNA, this could only be one out of many millions. But we can also have large scale mutations whereby considering a whole chromosome, which is lots and lots of DNA wrapped up into a complex structure, we can have whole areas of chromosomes mutated as well. So this is what we're calling a large scale mutation. So more specifically, a gene mutation is a change to the base sequence or the quantity of DNA within a gene or a section of DNA. So a gene codes for a particular protein in DNA, so it's a length of bases in a particular order. So a gene mutation could either be a change to the base sequence, for example changing one base to another, like an A to a G for example, or it can be a change to the quantity of DNA in a gene or a section of DNA. So we could have some DNA which is multiplied and repeated, or we could have some of it cut out, so the whole gene loses a bunch of bases or gains a bunch of bases. These types of gene mutations can occur spontaneously or randomly during the process of DNA replication. So the cell is often carrying out DNA replication quite a lot through life. This is where we have an original DNA strand copied into one and two copies. For example, if there's a cell in the skin which needs to divide into two new cells, it needs to copy its DNA so that each new cell has a set of DNA. So sometimes it's during this process in replication where these mutations arise. In replication we need to make all of these new DNA strands and sometimes it's just by chance that there's an error in placing the wrong base in the wrong place. For example, this is the correct base on the fifth one along this gene. Here we've done it correctly, but in this cell they've accidentally placed a base which is incorrect. So this is a gene mutation because now the base sequence has changed and this can happen at multiple points. And when you consider that there are millions of bases along the length of DNA, this can happen randomly at any point. On the other hand, however, a chromosome mutation is a change to the structure or the number of whole chromosomes. So in most organisms, the DNA gets packaged into chromosomes, and there are these large areas in the nucleus where there's lots and lots of DNA wrapped up into tight spirals and coils to make sure that there's more space. And a chromosome mutation can be a change to the structure, so we could cut some of it out, or we could change a whole part of the chromosome and swap it for another, for example, or the number, so we might accidentally have too many chromosomes, or we may end up with losing one of the chromosomes. So it's structure or number of the chromosomes. And whereas gene mutations tend to happen in replication, chromosome mutations usually happen during the process of meiosis. So remember, in the process of meiosis, we're forming gametes which have half the genetic material. So we've got original cells copying their material and making sure that each gamete has half our genetic material, for example sperms and eggs. But when this goes wrong, we can often have chromosome mutations here, for example, where we've got too many chromosomes in one cell and not enough in the other. So it's during the process of meiosis where chromosomes are being jumbled around and moved about, where these chromosomal mutations can occur, changes to the structure or their number. Some mutations can be inherited, i.e. passed on, but it depends on what type of mutation it is. If a mutation occurs during the formation of gametes, then it might be inherited by the offspring. The reason for this is because the gametes, like the egg and the sperm cells, are what are going to be forming the offspring. This is how we form new life. So the mutations which happen inside either of these might be passed on to the offspring that they form. 
And this is actually important for evolution. Mutations can be very useful because it increases genetic variation within a species. These types of mutations are what led to different coloured eyes and lots of other different features in the body. And if they are an advantage if they help us to survive, this can improve the state of our species and encourage evolution. So it's important that mutations happen at the gametes to increase genetic variation. However, if the mutation occurs during mitotic division of somatic cells, then it won't be inherited by the offspring. So mitotic division means that it's happening during mitosis, where they're not forming gametes, they're just forming more of themselves. And somatic cells essentially means body cells, not gametes. For example, in our blood, we need blood cells to divide by mitosis to keep making new blood cells. In the trachea, or the airways, we need ciliated cells to keep replenishing themselves by mitosis because they get damaged in friction and mechanical forces. And in the skin, for example, we need cells to keep dividing, squamous cells specifically, because they get lost through damage to the skin. So these types of cells are cloning themselves through mitosis to replace those that get lost. And if there is an error in the DNA replication process, the cell is harmed by that mutation, of course, but they don't get passed to offspring because none of our body cells move on to our offspring, only the gametes do. The problem with these types of mutations, the mutations which occur in somatic cells, is that it results often in cancers. So if we have a normal cell to start with, for example, a normal skin cell, and it undergoes a mutation during its replication, then that cell can often become cancerous. So we've briefly touched upon how gene mutations are often caused in replication and chromosome mutations often happen in meiosis. But there are different causes of mutation and some mutations can be increased in risk by these factors. Mostly mutations occur spontaneously during the process of DNA replication. So we've already said how cells need to multiply and replicate themselves. And in doing so, they have to make two new copies of their DNA so that every single cell, when it divides, will have a copy, a complete set of that DNA. And just by chance, by some errors, sometimes there will be an error in the base that's put there, and so this would be a spontaneous mutation. Although it's completely random, the rate of mutation is about 1 in 100 million bases. So every time we replicate and put in place 100 million bases, often there will be a mistake. So as you can see, it's pretty rare anyway. However, the rate of mutation can be increased by mutagens. So we can get more mutations than we would normally have by particular substances or materials known as mutagens. So what is a mutagen? A mutagen is a chemical or physical or biological agent which causes mutations. So they can physically damage the DNA in some sort of way to cause a mutation. So we've got lots of different examples. A physical mutagen might be something like ionizing radiation, for example from x-rays or from the sun, which can physically break apart the DNA strands. And if it breaks apart the DNA strands, then it can cause the bases to go into the wrong place, it can cause changes to the structure of chromosomes, and many different types of mutation. Chemical mutagens might be, for example, deaminating agents. There are lots of different chemicals which can damage DNA, and they tend to change one base into another base. So for example, changing an A to a C or an A to a T. Biological mutagens tend to be those that infect us, for example, a virus, because some viruses can insert their DNA into a host cell, like HIV. Many mutagens cause mutations in DNA which lead to the cell becoming cancerous, and so these mutagens are what we call carcinogens. So again, if we had a normal cell and a particular mutagen were to turn this cell into a cancerous cell, then this mutagen is now termed as being a carcinogen. So anything carcinogenic is potentially cancer causing. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.